Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time on Target Morning Brief for Invest in Fighter Pop Precision on a daily basis. Today, we're going to talk about Netflix. Netflix crushed earnings uh, last night, coming in at $3.19 a share versus $2.56 um, expected. So, overall, pretty big uh, earnings beat. Subscriber increase was greater than they expected 4.4 million versus 3.8 million. And, uh, you know, analysts are completely split this morning. So what I want to do is kind of break down at least what I think uh, from my perspective. We use Netflix. Uh, Irene and I actually kind of consider Netflix uh, kind of a date night thing versus a lot of people go out to dinner or, you know, go out to movies or whatever. We like to kind of stay at, stay at home, be able to bring the entertainment to us, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I, we, we love it. But when we think really Netflix, it isn't necessarily Netflix. It's really any of the streaming options. Uh, we have Apple TV and, and Disney Plus and <clears throat> watch some stuff on the HBO channels. You know, so really kind of in Hulu, don't, don't really care where it came comes from. Uh, we're looking for the best content out there. And when you think of Netflix, obviously the latest craze right now is Squid Game. If you haven't seen it, it's kind of a much must watch, I think, uh, from an entertainment perspective, but also really peels back. And I did an entire morning show on it, uh, so I won't repeat a lot of that, but it really peels back a lot of human motivation issues, relationship with money issues, uh, you know, investing versus gambling type issues. Uh, the worst the worst part of human behavior, uh, it, it highlights that. And of course, it sensationalizes it and turns it, you know, for entertainment purposes. But I think there are some interesting things really to think about as you watch several folks go on a personal journey for a, for a nine episode uh, season. And I think, you know, I think season two is going to be tough to do just because season one was so unique in what it was capturing. But uh, that's an opinion. But the, the point being is Squid Game, obviously, number one uh, in the world, number one in several countries, most watched show ever on Netflix, which is a bold statement, right, for a non-U.S. film. So it kind of brings in some themes as to, well, uh, is the expansion to international now? I mean, I watched the version that was entirely in Korean with subtitles and couldn't imagine watching it in, in English, in English eyes. Uh, it's probably not a word uh, version, but I think it did bring out, even though I don't know what the, the characters were saying in their native language, uh, it did bring out the emotion and the intensity of what they are saying on how they said it, if that makes sense. But if that, if, if really, if really Netflix is going to broad its inter, broaden its international exposure, well, that would be a reason to invest and think that it's going higher. The reasons not to invest are Apple and Disney have both said that they are going to take over in the streaming space for Netflix by having superior content. Um, my personal opinion, everybody's different, so I'm not trying to say that mine's right. I'm just saying personal opinion is Apple has far less content, and, but that they uh, they just don't miss. I mean, they really don't. There are not bad shows on Apple. You can really pick anything. <clears throat> Again, my opinion, not yours. Don't care. Just saying that the, the superior content, you know, I, I think if Apple stays with that kind of philosophy of we'll offer less, but we, uh, you can go to whatever it is and watch it, then, you know, and there's not a lot of controversy. Obviously, with Netflix, you have the Chappelle show, the closer uh, controversy, and, you know, how much artists are willing to, you know, express themselves versus kind of, I, I guess, if you will, um, fit in with today's culture, right? So, you know, a lot less uh, controversy uh, when you, when you, uh, get away from Netflix and go to Apple and Disney. So how's it all going to turn out? I don't know. I like Apple and Disney as, as investments much better than I do Netflix. I don't have any personal money in Netflix. I do have Netflix in the book for some clients that love Netflix and say, I want some Netflix Netflix stock. What do you think? I'm like, eh, I don't know. It's pretty expensive. And I don't know that it's going to scream higher. And they're like, well, I'll put a few shares in there anyway. That's kind of how that goes for somebody who's passionate about it. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Our question of the day is one I had yesterday. I learned some things, but you know, learn stuff every day in this industry, uh, largely because there's a large volume of material and the rules change over time. So 
that's uh, helpful in, in keeping you humble <laughs> because you have to look up things a lot, right? And that's okay uh, to make sure clients get the best information. But somebody asked me, you know, hey, should I invest in a for invest? Um, I have a new government job. Should I use the 403B or 457? They had a choice in the matter. So I looked up the difference. And we're going to talk about the difference. There's a couple things with the 457 that are unique that I did not know about. You do not have to wait to 59 and a half to take your money out of a 457 plan. Did not know that. It's like, where's that little secret gem being? And there's like a final three year plan, which somebody was talking about, I don't know, probably two years ago. But I remember talking to somebody specifically about this and they were talking about a three year top off towards the end. And I was like, I've never heard of such a thing. I was thinking they were talking like police and firefighters often can. Or, you know, there's military options too, but they don't really have the ability to get overtime. But there's a, you know, police and firefighter, there's probably other jobs out there that can you put, get paid a lot of overtime in their final three years of working. So therefore their retirement pay is higher, higher than their average salary. I mean, I've seen that, that's pretty common knowledge, but uh, 457 does offer some unique things in the final three years that are worth taking a look at. 403B, as far as I could tell, is pretty much exactly the same as the 401k, as far as the rules, if you will. <clears throat> okay, longs out there today, don't really like the longs that we have. Uh, FSTX is five-star therapeutics. Uh, I couldn't, I read the article on why it's going higher and it doesn't make any sense to me, but it is going higher. So we'll take a look at that. And then I have two shorts for you. Uh, MGA is light on volume. That's Magna International off of uh, Mystic Earnings. And then Array Technologies is probably the most interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a double downgrade from uh, Guggenheim for it's a solar technology company. Uh, so solar panels and things for the input costs, I guess, are through the roof. So remember steel was incredibly expensive. Uh, you know, that's kind of peeling back maybe six months or so. But with inflation and everything is getting more expensive, aluminum has run up and a lot of the other basic materials that go in solar panels. So they're, uh, they think uh, Guggenheim thinks are challenged going forward. So we'll take a look at that. All right, thank you so much for checking us out today. Uh, if you want to subscribe, make sure you hit subscription as well as the notification bell. If you want to join us in the room, it's 25 bucks a month to come on in. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's take you over to the lineup card for today, Wednesday, October 20th. Quarterly taxes are due. If anybody is paying those for sales tax, I don't know about the actual uh, uh, regular taxes, but we are going to talk about Netflix today. Netflix earnings. Just typed in here real quick. There we go. Uh, the question of the day 403B versus 457. All right, and then we'll take a look at Netflix. Now all that information is correct. All right, welcome to the lineup card. Standard disclaimer applies. This is a financial education presentation. You have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear uh, this morning. Full disclaimer information is available at ototnow.com. All right, our mission objectives is the same as our everyday, grow our money, protect our money, live off our money. Today we're talking about growing our money. Uh, obviously Netflix doesn't pay any dividend and it's all about the growth. Uh, it is profitable. Uh, I'll show you the PE ratios and they are, you know, it's more expensive than several other things in the market out there, but it's not insanely expensive. So it really could go either way, but we'll take a look at the chart and I'll let you know my take. All right, the question of the day we already talked about in the open flow, long, short, open, short, long. We'll do a market review, headline review, go around, take a look at the Bitcoin price, 64,000. So uh, Ethereum's at 3,900 and change, you know, streaking towards 4,000. So again, major theme for the fourth quarter is uh, crypto going higher. We'll look at the chart for Netflix. We'll get into our short-term execution. Again, not in love with any of them, but Array Technologies, A-R-R-Y, short is probably our best bet. I uh, had a nice trade yesterday in that BITO. Um, very nice. It moved, moved significantly higher yesterday. All right. Contingencies and academic resources are standard. Let's go to TD Ameritrade and take a look at the overall market. Uh, after a little bit of a yawn at the beginning of the fourth quarter, look at these past five days on the far right of the chart, right? Far right side of the chart, excuse me. You know, five up days. Today's a little bit muted and a little bit just even, right? So it really could go either way. 
but pretty significant move when you really look back you know we're we're within all-time highs again you know we're with approaching all-time highs again certainly the up channels have, have held so we really shall see this this surprises me with everything that's going on but the market also keeps everybody humble too because you can't really predict these things there are certainly headwinds out there so i'm not in a rush you're not going to miss out on anything if you don't put all your uh money in the middle on uh on this move higher here here's about a straight line as you can get the past five days in the s p 500 straight up here's the day trading chart that we'll come back to again all the way to the right is a r r y if you want to pull that up and get ready for here in a few minutes all right, before that, let's go ahead and take a look at these futures I keep talking about. There they are. Dow down a little bit and uh, S&P and NASDAQ up just fractionally. Uh, EU <clears throat> mixed and light across the board. Same with uh, Asia, Hong Kong up over a percent though. Chinese tech stock surge, you know that's one of my favorites. Um, again, house of pain though, so a lot of you are out of it. Uh, bonds 1.63%, oil holding uh, above 80 still, even though it sold off a little bit. Gold and silver popping slightly, but the big story is Bitcoin and Ethereum, again, continue to move higher uh, with the Bitcoin futures ETF that came out yesterday, as well as really the overall narrative uh, for crypto is becoming more attractive to people. So don't invest in it if you don't like it. I'm not trying to convince you to change your mind on it. But if you are open to it, there are certain ways to invest in it. All right. As far as our, <clears throat> here's our uh, um, kind of headlines for today. I'll just really talk about Netflix and what comes next. So you, there you had your stronger earnings, all the numbers there that go with that. And then you get into, and of course, the impacts of Squid Game, which you already talked about in the open. You get into City Has Neutral, Bank of America Buy, Credit Suisse outperform, Barclays out, out overweight, Cohen outperform. You can really go down through all of these market perform. Um, the, but there are some negatives. You get all the way down here to the end. There's some neutrals in here. <clears throat> but everybody's got an opinion. That's for darn sure, right? There's your Needham comes out with an underperform rating saying it just can't stay on pace uh, and continue to grow. And I kind of agree that I kind of, I'm, you know, I, I don't know, just, I don't know, if, I don't know of anyone that I, in, in my circle that doesn't have Netflix already. So where are these new subscribers coming from? I don't know. Um, but uh, they get paid for that, not me, but I don't know if they can keep it up to the same extent that they seem to always have. All right. That's enough on Netflix. Let's go over to the open. Um, I did owe you the chart. So we'll come back to the chart after we get through the open. I'll be back in just a second. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target play of the day. We have five seconds to the market open on today, Wednesday, October 20th. Four screens in front of you here on the TD Ameritrade. Think Pipes platform, you just heard the opening bell. On the far left, some positivity in the market uh, as we go to the open, but overall, it's pretty even. <clears throat> we have one long here in FSTX. Again, this is Five Star Therapeutics. You know, sketchy name when you have like Five Star in the name. <clears throat> but they have a headline out there that I didn't truly understand, but they're poised to go higher. We have MGA, which is Magna International, missing earnings, so they're off uh, five um, five percent or so. So keep an eye on that. And then the one I like is this array technologies. Um, again, solar panel company input costs, supply chain issues, uh, that are being highlighted. Plus it's run up a lot. So I think this is attractive, uh, to the downside. So 1920, we're looking for an entry at about 19. I can't really take it right here. That's just not enough, uh, for me to see, to get the 20 cent stop that I want. If we get in a minute two and we're still above 19, there's 19. So let's take it here. This is pretty aggressive, so don't take it if you don't want, um, but it's really poised to, to go lower here after not going lower in the first minute. So again, taking it at 19, 20 cent stop is what we're looking at. Oh, wow, this is, chart's killing me as far as drawing my arrow. Killing me in a good way, right? Because it's falling off the cliff while I'm talking. So uh, 19, so 20 cents stop. So 1880 is our one R point. Uh, 1860, if we can see if we can zoom out and get it on the rest of the chart. 1860 is the two R and then out at 1840. 
is what we're looking at. Can't get the 1840 drawn in there, but we don't really need it. So again, in a 19, covering up at 1920, 20 cents is your R unit. We're already up in R uh, with, I think, in a really good position to, uh, to have this trade work for us uh, this morning. So we'll let the trade cook while we're talking <clears throat> and look at some other things. Is this uh, Magna International is really not moving. So let's get rid of that and look at, uh, there was this interim CFO departure at a company I'd never heard of, AERI, <clears throat> Airy Pharmaceuticals. Let's take a look at that. Um, there you can see the storyline that's headed south of uh, never good when uh, folks, the financial folks up and leave. Uh, but really the low volume is the issue there. If you look down at the bottom again, 30,000 shares, I mean, there's not enough volume to hop in there with any. If you swing your bat into that crowd, you're gonna move the market, which you don't wanna do uh, when you're trading. All right, FSTX is just clearly whatever uh, storyline that is, that's just going higher. So that would have worked uh, pretty easy. Let's take a look at the other one we had here. I had uh, LAD, which I can't remember what LAD was, other than LA Dodgers, good Dodgers. Uh, LAD, Lithium Motors. Okay, yeah, I remember this. So our trade's working again, 1840, get set up for the uh, exit point there. Um, <clears throat> all right, Lithium Motors over here, going higher. All right, uh, 1840 and we're out. So touched it, so you should be limited out because you had it programmed in. Uh, if you didn't, you, if you missed this, you could hold it. But uh, to recap the trade, very nice trade this morning. Uh, there's my worst arrow ever right? as I'm trying to draw it. This thing's falling off a cliff. We waited for that first minute to go by because it was just too volatile. So from 1920 to 1870, that's a 50 cent move here in that first minute. So, you know, I, with the system I use, I wait for that second minute. But as soon as that second minute opened right at 19, it was like, okay, let's take it there. Um, and there you saw the march. Uh, took it at 19, we covered it at 1920. It's right at that 20 cent stop, which is that 1% mark, and then fell basically walked straight down from to 1880, 1860, and then out at 1840. So again, if you want to keep well, if you want to keep some of this, that's up to you. I don't think it ever goes back to the high of the day of 1920. Uh, but I do, do think this is some profit taking. Whoever had this 1840 in here obviously bumped out of it and moved it up 40 cents in, in their exit, right? So this is just going to continue to walk back down. I'd imagine it ends up you know, somewhere around 18. But we'll go ahead and close out the trade today based on where it is right now. Nice 3 R trade. All right, let's switch over to looking at long-term stuff. And see what's going on. We have an Apple call up 6%. That usually means Apple's up. Another Apple call. Don't see Apple on the front page here, but sometimes it's hard to pick that stuff out. All right, Abbott Labs is up. I did not see a headline for Abbott Labs. You know about Ethereum's up big today. It's up 3%. ETHE is the Grayscale Trust. Uh, if you're interested, Chinese tech, we know that's up. Alibaba and KWeb are bouncing. Palo Alto, CRISPR Therapeutics, MicroStrategy. Where'd you go? There it is. That's the one I use for my Bitcoin proxy. I like it. CRPT is the uh, crypto space ETF. Uh, so I like that. If you're interested, reach out. Raytheon down a percent. MasterCard down a percent. Marijuana theme. Marijuana theme up. I'm, I can't say I'm completely out of it, but I, I sell more of it every day right? It's just, I like the theme. I think nationwide legalization is going to happen. It's just not making any money and I um, can't stick around forever waiting for it. So there may be a time to re-enter, but for most part, most people I am exiting the marijuana space or I've already left it. All right. <clears throat> Disney, we talked about earlier. It's off a little bit today. What I don't invest in is restaurants for the large part. Can't Maybe, yep, I don't think I have a single restaurant in the book of any form. Maybe I do, but uh, I can't think of one. But uh, Brinker International whiffed earnings pretty hard. They're the parent company of several restaurants out there. They're off 13% today. So any of the restaurants that I would consider, which are more of the targeted companies like a Cheesecake Factory or a Dave and Buster's, uh, nope, all those are getting hit like 5% today. So you can see if they're not in here, because I don't know. All right, let's go back to long. I never did see Apple in here. Let's just see what's going on in Apple land. Okay, 
barely in the green, but pretty steady move up this week from 139 up to 148. So nice move overall. All right, let's bring it back to the main chart. Again, I owed you that Netflix chart. So I ran out of time before the brief. So here's the chart on Netflix. So at a glance, when you see a chart like this, it's run up, you know, 500 to 639. You're kind of like, well, probably not the best entry point, right? Unless the story's changing. I don't think the story's changing at all. I think the story may be getting better, um, but it's not really changing. And I think international expansion could be a game changer for Netflix, but it also major competitors out there in Apple and Disney, so I don't particularly care for it as an investment. It did go through a lot of congestion and now it's got its footing uh, going back higher. I talked about in the open, the PE ratios, you know, it is profitable. So making some good money out there, uh, no dividends. So you're not owning it to live off your money. Nobody's betting against it over here in the short float. It's got pretty decent return numbers. It's just, these are pretty high, you know, PE ratios. Uh, the peg ratio is within range. I mean, it's 1.57, that's pretty good. It's got all kinds of earn, you know, earnings out there. So, you know, not much red on this chart other than just the valuation that's kind of run up. So uh, I'm not against it, but I would say if you have it, hold it. If you do not have it, I would not buy into it here. I'd wait for another opportunity and just realize you may not, you may not get one. And if you don't, that's okay. There are no, literally there are no uh, called strikes in investing, right? You either take it or you don't. All right, I'll close with this, the 457 plan versus 403B, what's the difference? They're both public sector. So if you stayed in the private sector uh, your whole life, you've either done 401k or thrift savings plan or some version of, of that. Um, excuse me, 401k thrift savings plan is a uh, government sponsored. So 457B is the one that most people are talking about. The F is a unique case for executives. So contact me if you have questions on that, if that applies to you. Uh, but mostly it's the 457B versus the 403B, and you might be able to do both. Okay, let's look for this special. <clears throat> <clears throat> so here's a special rule I did not know about. I don't know everything. I don't profess to know everything. I'm pretty transparent about what I know and what I don't. Um, but if you're within three years of normal retirement age, you may contribute even more as up to $39,000. I mean, that's a game changer for three years, 39. That's 100 right off the top and change that you could put towards your retirement. So really, that's that's a lot better catch up contribution than an extra thousand here or there just because you happen to be 50 or in this case, 6,500 for you know a normal 401k number, which are up here. So, you know, it really allows you to catch up pretty significantly. So that's kind of interesting. And then the other pros and cons is there's the pro. Here's the other one I did not know. Is that I highlight in blue there for you. While other plans do not allow distributions until you're 59 and a half, that used to be pretty old. I'm sitting here 52 and a half myself. It doesn't seem as old as I thought it would be. Um, your benefits become available when you no longer work for your employer. So yeah, you can take your, you don't have to wait to the 59 and a half to take your benefits. Now you could argue on, you don't want to be too young, but I will tell you here where this is, a, this is a player. And I have this conversation, I'd say every week, I'm not sure every day, that might be an overstatement, but folks that don't work until they collect social security have this gap time frame. Uh, so, so if you retire at 55, and most people don't collect until 67, you have a gap, right? And it's that gap time is working with folks that are no longer in the workforce to try to figure out where to get the money, what accounts, and they generally have all kinds of different flavors, right? Uh, of retirement accounts. You've got some, some 401k stuff, you've got a not traditional IRA, you've got Roth IRA, you may have a SEP IRA, um, you know, you may have a self-directed IRA, and you may have a taxable account. And then, then it becomes a, which money do I use? And a lot of it depends on sheer income coming in the door. So the good news is you don't have that income. However, if you take from your 457, then that will be at, in stuff that's taxed. So 457 is kind of perfect there because if you're 55 and can't touch some things until 59 and a half, then you're kind of stuck in that gap. So anyhow, that's what I didn't uh, know about the 457. So I wanted to show that to you guys. All right. Uh, that's all I have for this morning. Again, market's hanging out in the green. So it looks like another decent day. Thanks for checking in. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.